The ancient Celts, like many cultures, both loved and feared water. This gave rise to many creatures, some terrifying as they were beautiful, and some mysterious as they were dangerous. In turn, these creatures gave rise to legends and to myths. This is one such legend. Telling the story of the regal and terrifying Kelpie and the girl who managed to fill the icy heart of one such creature with warmth. The story is known to the Celts as Ishke Yushke Es Dianam, or the Kelpie and Dianam. This story begins with the seven sons of the seven chiefs out hunting. They were out hunting. The men spotted a beautiful stallion on the shore, and intrigued, they approached and they mounted one by one until all seven were seated on the horse's back. And shockingly, they fit without problem. The men laughed joyfully as the animal raced across the beach and forward over the sea, running over the waves as another steed would across solid ground. A man named Donald, the last one to mount, and the shield bearer, became suspicious when he found out that his hand could not be removed from the horse's hide where it rested. So as the horse descended with no warning into a whirlpool that led to the bottom of the ocean, Donald acted quickly. He pulled his hunting blade from its sheath and sliced off his own fingers, falling from the stallion's back, and was unable to do anything but watch as his friends, the other princes, were taken deep into the ocean's depths. Donald, left with little choice, returned to the chiefs. His story of their encounter with what he was certain was the Kelpie, and the fate of the princes bitter on his lips. Heartbroken and grief-stricken as they were over the fate of their sons, there was nothing that the very human chiefs could do against the Kelpie, so they did nothing. Donald, sick of the chieftains in action, went to Dao, the great druid of the court, who healed Donald's hand. Dao then promised to save and return the six young princes on the eve of the San Juan festival. Meanwhile, Donald, still grieving the loss of his companions, sought out his closest friend, the fair Dianam, daughter of the high chieftain and sister to one of the six lost princes. Contrary to many such stories, the two were only friends, and Tunnel's heart belonged to the beautiful, vain, and cruel Firenay, who misused and abused Donald. Though Donald would not share the reason for his sorrow, Dianam comforted him, and they parted ways. But despite having not been told in so many words the truth, Dianam's heart knew. Every day she would go to the sea and sing of her loss and of her grieving heart. On one such day, a handsome man, drawn by her singing, inquired as to the reason for her sorrow. Dianam, touched by the honest concern in his voice, told him the tragic loss caused by the Kelpie. A tragic tale indeed, fair lady, he said. See, you have brought a tear to my cheek. Would you do me a kindness and wipe away my sorrow? Dianam, once again touched by the strange man's sadness on her behalf, did as he asked. The tear that she wiped away fell from her finger and landed on her chest. At that moment, warmth seeped into her heart, and she fell under the spell of the Kelpie. My name is Yehushka, the Kelpie, Lord of the Deeps. Do you fear me? No, Dianam responded caught in the Kelpie's spell that caused her to forget to be afraid of the monster. The Kelpie smiled and the two swore their love for the other, spending the rest of their day on the shore. Thereafter, every day, Dianam would go to the shore and he would meet her there. They would laugh and sing and talk, growing closer and closer, but no matter what, he would always, always leave before the sun vanished entirely beyond the horizon. Dianam, however, didn't care. 
Loving him deeply, she found nothing but joy in his visits. On one such day, however, as they lay side by side on the beach, he was weary, and so he asked Dianam to wake him before sunset. Then he fell into a deep slumber. Dianam stayed beside him until sunset, but finding that he was still deeply asleep, she didn't have the heart to wake him and keep her word, and soon she herself was lulled into sleep by the sounds of the waves crashing on the shore. Well into the night, she was awoke to something strange. The soft skin of her lover was now thick and wet. His silken hair was green seaweed, and instead of strong fingers, sharp hooves were tangled in her hair. Dianam panicked. She managed to rip herself free of the monster, his real face breaking the spell caused by the tear and allowing her to flee back home. For many days, the Kelpie called out to her from the edge of the sea, begging her to return to him. But Dianam feared falling under the spell once more and refused to go to him. It was only as the day of the festival came closer that she finally gathered the courage to go to the seashore and meet her ex-lover. My love, he spoke, I have missed you. See my tears, come, please, please wipe my sadness away. Dianam, though, refused, backing away when he tried to approach and calling out to him, I know what you are, horse of the seas, lord of the deep. Looking at her sorrowfully, he responded, I need your love, Dianam, and the love of no other. Her heart, her very soul, yearned for his cold, perfect love, but she remained resolute. This monster had stolen her brother and taken many lives. If you love me, Ushke, then you will give me a gift. She looked him in the eye. The gift of my brother and his friends, the chieftain's sons, their safe return. Helpy bowed his head in defeat. I will do as you request, though you hate me now. I will grant you this. Look for them on the night of the San Juan festival. With that, the Kelpie changed into a white steed and plunged into the waves, vanishing into the sea. Dianam watched the Kelpie disappear, her heart breaking and tears streaming down her face. On the night of the festival, the Kelpie left the ocean and joined the festival in his human shape. The people saw him as a mighty chieftain, and he attracted the attention of the prideful Fyrene, who danced with Donald. But when the Kelpie asked her to dance, she quickly deserted Donald and danced with the Kelpie, despite the warnings of Dianam about the monster. Fyrene refused to believe and accused Dianam of being jealous she had caught the attention of such a grand chief. The Kelpie, though, did not stay long and left after inviting Fyrene to come find him on the shore after midnight. As the festival drew to a close and midnight approached, Dao the Druid went to the sea and performed a ritual to rescue the princes from the Kelpie. At the same time, Fyrene went to meet the Kelpie, watching in shock and fear as he changed into a monster, but she had no chance to escape before he grabbed her, tossed her onto his back, and plunged into the sea with her still clutching at his mane. Upon reaching his kingdom, the Kelpie heard the old druid's ritual, and he remembered his promise to Dianam. The Kelpie stayed true to his word and released the young princes back to the surface. Dianam was the first to spot them, and she rushed forward, hugging her brother close to her bosom and weeping with joy. The chieftains celebrated the return of their sons, and the people rejoiced. Some months after her brother's return, Dianam and Donald married, for, despite not being in love, they got along well and were best friends. Deep beneath the waves, the Kelpie heard of the wedding, and he shed one last tear for the loss of the human mortal who had stolen his heart. And that is where the story of the Kelpie and Dianam ends. Thank you for listening.